Hello, my trashy slugs. Come see me live. I'll be at the Hartford Funny Bone, August 27th and 28th. The Milwaukee Improv, September 3rd through 4th. I'll be shitting and vomiting into a bucket doing ayahuasca, September 5th and 6th. I'll be at Zany's in Chicago, September 7th and 8th. Cleveland Hilarities, September 9th through 11th. Never forget. And I'll be at the Life is Beautiful concert in Vegas, September 18th and 19th. Go to AnnieLetterman.com for more tour dates. There's so many more coming up from October on. All right, bye. Hi, slugs. It's me. I just wanted to let you know I have a website with all my tour dates. You can check them out at estheronice.com. I don't know. I'm not a figure skater, but I thought that was cute. But I'm announcing I'm coming to New York in the fall. And as you know, all over Florida and uh, San Francisco and Portland. I'll see you guys there. Get tickets at estheronice.com. And please check out the Sad Malibu Barbie drop for Sleepover by Esther at sleepoverbyester.com. Wait, by the way, you said that you didn't have a cowboy outfit. I do. This is the most cowboy outfit I've ever seen. Yeah. No, no, hey, she just threw that together. I know. <laughs> you know, woke up this morning. I'm wearing magnetic Peru's. ones, by the way. You look Indian right now. I know. I know. And I was like, there's definitely like a cops and robbers yeah. and you're missing out because of cultural appropriation. And you've got to stop this, people. I Let will, us appropriate. What's the one thing that you wore once upon a time that you for sure cannot bring back now? I mean, Annie. Janko jeans? No, I mean, like for Halloween, a duck, a when I was tail. younger, I dressed as Osama bin Laden or oh. I dressed as Pocahontas one time. I really went for the full oh, cultural I have, experience. I, really I was going to say, you know what? You know what? You know what? Yeah. Also, she, by the way, she looks like Pocahontas is dating a cowboy and, she, and she's wearing his stuff. And then Bobby walks in and you're like, who is this guy? He must be the. <laughs> You must be bounty hunters that have come to get this guy and get him into jail. Uh, I like to consider myself a bounty hunter in this outfit. <laughs> it's pretty good. What would a hunter do? Explain your outfit, Annie. And by the way, guys, welcome to the show. We have a very special cowboy theme, if you can't already tell by my fit. I just want to say, guys, the sheriff's in town and the sheriff's got muffin tops. So. <laughs> Right? And you're very proud of it. I like that. I appreciate it. And Eric, I feel like um, you came a little bit underdressed, but you generally look like a cool older cowboy anyways. The, the know, mustache and everything. I didn't trust. You do look a, like you look like you live in Brooklyn, honestly. But I didn't trust. <laughs> I didn't trust you guys. You know, like when you say to somebody, <gasps> wear a costume. And then I show up looking like Dracula. That's and then you guys are like, what's wrong with you? Such a good idea. Can we do that to Esther? <laughs> Let's do that to Esther. Yeah, I didn't trust you guys. So I was like, I'm not dressing like a cowboy. Esther, we're dressing like the ugliest thing we can possibly be. And, she and, just then, and you up guys and don't even acknowledge it. She just comes in, in and you go, what the fuck's wrong we with you? We get prom makeup and stuff. We look gorgeous. <laughs> I know I told you that I gave up um, lashes last week. Yeah. But my mind has since changed. They're back on. I got the, these are the magnetic ones. And what are your thoughts? I was, hour one, we'll see. <laughs> now, magnetic, what are you? Magnetic lashes? You know what's so funny? I was like, we're going to point a gun him, at a black man. <laughs> are you black? Enough. Because I feel like you, we talked during the, um, what is it? What was it called? The Black Lives Matter the black protest. Lives Matter, it was a yeah. protest. And then, but I was talking to you during it. And I was like, Eric, it's time. You have to tell us what your fucking ethnicity is. <laughs> no, it's I, time. He's ethnically ambiguous. People that are in Hollywood don't I, understand that what Eric has is, and Kalila too, you can't shut the it. fuck up about what you are. You should be very quiet about You know about why? It because you could get cast in so many things. Mm -mm. Now it's, it's cultural appropriation if you play a uh, Native American, but you could have been crushing it. I he will know. never say, so he can play anything. I want to know. I it's just a career. mix anyway. My, I have family from the Caribbean. You know, that's the, that's the say 30, 40% black part is my family that's from Jamaica and from Belize. Cool. And then like, you know, the, o the other side, I, I don't even really know is what the Do you know where is. in Belize? What do you mean where? Was it in Punta Gorda? Oh, Jesus. That's like, but that's like the I'm fancy at the, white part. I'm at, the Punta, I'm at the Punta Gorda in my life right now. <laughs> Wait, is that where? <laughs> well played. And it looks good. We're surprised. Everyone's surprised how good this weight gain looks on me. I really think everyone is. Wait, Annie. Is well, a lot of black guys, I'm sure. Are like, Is yeah. that where you, where you handled or you jerked off turtles? I didn't jerk off the turtles in that one. And I never fucking touched those turtles. I, their pussy juice was everywhere. But um, I did start looking at turtles again with love. Ugh, what I'm changing. How long did it take? I was just at the pet store and I was looking at them walking around their little... The red-eared sliders. Are, are you going to hold fresh. the guns the whole episode? Yes, I am. <laughs> They're very light. 
Wait, it's, I have something. It's else. very LAPD. All right, I'll hold this instead. You can pick. <laughs> Okay, get, get the gun. Get the gun. Get the guns. Just put. Don't even pull, pull the. Not, like, please don't cut yourself. Cut, no, it's cut not a. It's time. not a. Um, oh, it's not a. Yeah, yeah. It's a comb. <laughs> oh, all right. Do You know me enough to know that this is a comb. All right. For my mustache. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was in. I. It was the same trip. I. I. Okay, so I went. I had a year off from school. This is very white girl, but. I had a year off from school in between. And so you had I to went find to find yourself. <laughs> yeah, I find myself a I should have gone to India, found myself a Sherpa dick. That's um, what George did. He found a Sherpa dick? <laughs> well, you were religious. So you was that your rump schreimer or whatever? No, no, I went after uh, after college. I went to India to work in Bollywood. You did why does that actually look like it's supposed to hold balls, your mess? <laughs> Doesn't it? Am I wrong, Gabby? <laughs> I'm not trying to make it's fun of you. It's a banana like, hammock. You give, oh my God. It's a banana break hammock. We should sell those. <laughs> Merch idea. No, you should sell masks that could also look like panties. You know what they have? You know what I mean? They. Ha I was trying to get it for the show, but it was just some porn star. Someone sent it to me on DMs, but some porn star was wearing this like mask, the suction mask over her mouth that was a set of balls. And when you breathe in and out, it, like the balls <laughs> wiggle. <laughs> I wanted to get it for the show, but. I, I don't know if they exist. I think she got them custom made. <laughs> you can make masks easy, so that, you know. But they were like these were like there was a mold for them. Oh, oh got you, got you, got you. Like I maybe I think maybe some real balls were dipped into some. Is that a thing that women buy? No. Do you, do you got you? You know, there's some male porn star you like, and you buy no. his dick. No. You know what's his name? You know, um, what's his name? Um, there is a porn star not too far off from what you're saying. Um, He's a Spanish porn star and he's actually going to prison because he accidentally killed someone with toad venom. Um, oh, during, during that ceremony, when the compo ceremonies? Yeah, because it's apparently, it, it's, it mimics sort of the effects of DMT. Right. And um, Nacho Jesus. Vidal, his name is Nacho Vidal. You guys know Nacho Vidal. No. no. You guys don't pull watch him it. up, pull up that cock. <laughs> Let's see that he's dick, He's so George. famous. Um, I don't know. I, the I don't last know porn, porn star's star, names. The last porn star star, star I knew was um, he looks like was Ricky James Martin. Dean. And then once they started canceling porn stars, I was like, I'm out. I don't. When do they cancel porn stars? They started canceling. Yeah, well, they porn stars, It's a thin line between what's your job, Jesus what's consent, Christ. what's right. <laughs> Look at this guy. And so, what was it, George? Like he accidentally killed someone. He turned into a shaman. With with he's a cock him. shaman. I mean, if there's any if there's any biopic to be made, it's of this guy. And what a demise. I always think about that. Like, if you're a shaman, like, I know shaman who, shaman men who are married. And it's like, how do you, like, how do you make the move? Isn't that kind of a breach of power? That's true. <laughs> well, that's like all those yogi guys. Like, anybody that's running a yoga thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're always fucking everybody at the thing. Well, have but you seen also, the documentary the Bikram? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why they don't call it Bikram anymore. But I mean the ones that are, but I mean the ones that are, like, actually, like, in love. Like, even if it's, like, totally innocent, like, that's got to be an awkward, like, is this a date or are we on... Um, well, that's just, like, therapy. Hallucinogens. People fall in love with their therapist. But that's illegal. I know. That's what I'm saying, though. It should be but probably should similar. Be allowed, well, I guess you just can't shaman your girl. You got to be like, shaman hands off. You got to yeah, be you, like, my six hands are off. Well, one. it's the same way that if that you eye. are, let's say, a gynecologist or an obstetrician, you're not supposed to deliver your own baby know, if your wife's you in the hospital. To? Aren't you like, I'm good at this. Yeah, I, but I, when your emotions are involved, you're yeah. not doing your job in the most optimal yeah. way. Yeah, But wouldn't you be kind right? of pissed if your boyfriend, like, what if Bobby was a shaman and he's like, I'm sorry, I... I just oh, can't help you. What would Bobby be and a you, but, shaman? But of? you, but you see him helping everyone else. You'd be like, "Yo, can I get a little shamaning?" I, I would not want any shamaning from that man, even if he was the best <laughs> shaman on earth. What would he be even a shaman of? I don't fucking know. Like, if getting he, through life, rolling through life, just rolling. He's always just rolling, isn't well, that, he? He already is sort of a shaman of of like the tiger belly, you know, people. But he thinks he is. Yeah. Oh, he's like, yeah. I just said earlier, he's the David Duke of their... He is a David Duke you know of what I mean? sorts, I think. <laughs> Can I just say you look so hot? This is crazy. <laughs> I do. Yes. The, I just, oh, I'm sad I missed the... Oh, you see the cap. fake modesty over there? <laughs> no, Wait, she has low self-esteem. <laughs> I have low self-esteem. See, it. Annie knows me. She has low self-esteem. It's it, it's starting to get frustrating. I'm going to start slapping you around. Wait, hang on. Do you guys want to whip your ass until you really Well, it makes sense. She, you know, if she had better self-esteem, she would be with a hotter dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, how do you feel about your model fiance? By the way, congratulations. Yeah, well, I mean, it's all about... I think women, know y'all know how to... 
look at other things. Yeah. You know what I mean? This was the fake fight we got in. I'm so sorry about that. Can I apologize years later? Uh, yeah, uh, here we go. I want to make a public no, no, no. apology. No, no, no. It was fine when we had the fight. I thought we squashed it until I'm looking at it this wasn't... clip that people sent me from this <laughs> fucking podcast. Don't you love that? Where you guys are just, first of all, her just going like, can I tell you something Eric Griffin said to me? <laughs> like, like just like just out of nowhere, I said, you know what? You should wear lingerie. That's not what the fuck happened. And what did I do on Monday? I understand, but I like. I wore lingerie but yeah, but it did, Oh, that's so funny. It didn't help all and then she says and then this one jumps in oh well let me tell you and then you even said this i don't even remember what it was about That's and then you just so you know i was like but and thank god esther was just like mm, i'm just gonna be quiet <laughs> <laughs> This isn't going to go like, well. Let's just say Esther doesn't dip her toe in the pool, okay? <laughs> yeah, she didn't even want to show up Esther today. doesn't know how to swim, <laughs> let's just say that. I wanted you guys, I wanted to show you, not pasties? only do I have, yeah, you want to say, no, consent? Yeah, I've consent. I hit their pasties. Oh <laughs> they look great. God. You're so lucky. That what? could really have been a mangled mess. <laughs> Because she knew she had boob job, and then she got rid of the boob job. He knows. He was Her there the day after oh. I took my titties out. Oh, I was trying to look. I was trying to see it. No, I mean, I get it. You're yeah. like, no, medically, I would like to say. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. You no, think no, it could no, have no, been? No, but it's like, it's like, you know, I, look, as a dude, <laughs> we have a, such a stupid perspective on breast surgery, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I it changed. I, I Talking to a friend of mine one time, and she rocked my world with how she said it. Because it's like, you know, uh, she got a, she had big titties that were fake. You know, and she said, uh, I got rid of them because I was just tired of the attention. Now, a guy perspective is, what do you mean you're tired of the attention? That's why you got them. You want to have big, you know. And then she said to me, she was like, no, I just wanted to, I wanted to feel like a woman. I wanted to wear dresses a certain way. I wanted to, you know, I, I just, you know, yeah. being, you know, and I was like, oh. They do look so good in shirts. Like, yeah. I do love a covered They did it on titty. me. They did it on me. It made me look like. Well, it just turned you into a different thing. And if you yeah. have the self-esteem you have, right? Yeah. Which, yeah, which it doesn't, terrible. you're you're good. You've worked on it though. So yeah. it's like, you can take a compliment, but people that have like true low self-esteem, when someone calls them hot, it like almost hurts them. Cause it's yeah, like, yeah. that's not how I feel. Yeah, you know? I think that's yeah. mostly what you nailed. You, you think, actually nailed it right there. That. We all feel that. I feel great. Like, you guys you can sure? compliment me all you want. I know I'm amazing. It's It took a while to get here, but. <laughs> No, Taylor Hansen's taking over. Oh, I just watched an old concert of the Hansen, or the Hansen brothers, Hansen, just Hansen. And oh my God, Annie, oh, I, identical. I know, I'm not kidding. Like people, I think people think it's like a hacky thing to say that it'll cook. I was in middle school when they Do came Do you remember out, Umbop? Yeah, I looked. I looked exactly. They were the was, original. Like they, 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 they broke the mold of the boy band because they actually wrote and played their own instruments. I know they were like little music. Christian boys. They were like yeah. the Georges. Wait, but they, they bands. now play with like the Philharmonic. Like they're like they're legitimate musicians. musicians. They yeah. also got married when they were about thirteen. They all have like twenty-seven kids. I was like, okay, mm. boys. That, like, that they didn't sense. succumb to the lifestyle. Good for them. And you know what they also did when they wore rollerblades? They wore their knee pads and their helmets. Like, how funny is it to be a boy band that's all brothers that look like girls and to wear all of your protection in the video? It's so funny. What I wanted to show you guys was actually not my titty, but a very iconic shirt that I've had for a long, long time. And it's a vintage Loretta Lynn and Conway Twitty shirt. Oh, it's and a very well, it's a I don't Conway Twitty shirt now. <laughs> <laughs> Twitty, because we did tweak those titties, didn't we not? <laughs> yeah, you could sell. Yeah, you could sell. That could be your merch. Conway hey, titty. What did you think? What do you think? What was your expectation of when I told you, like, I got my implants removed? What did you think they were going to look I like? I thought they were going to be like empty bags, like, like a bean bag that needs a refilling. <laughs> And they just look like they look great. Small they look like a regular. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, like th I thought to myself, was like, you know, you you know, you were just like this busty. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember first meeting her and Bobby brought you around. I was like, oh, brother. we were all pretty surprised. Yeah, I was yeah. all brother. And then he, she was very like also overly sexual. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, Kalila, you Roll would the hug, tapes. I you stand by hug, what I said. I take back my apology. You would hug. No, no, no. You would the way you would hug people. Like, <gasps> like I remember you gave me a I'm, hug one time and it was like He's full projecting. body He's hug. Projecting. Was like, well, hang on, <laughs> Eric. When you have a double was, D's, no, 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 you don't it, have a choice. They, they, also, by the way, I give the best understands. fucking hugs. No, no, this is, what are you talking about? I'm down 40 pounds. You dude. actually don't have titties. You don't have titties. <laughs> you have a belly still. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's looking better though. By the way, this is the hardest part to lose when you're losing weight. You lose weight like this. 
So it's I'm shaped, so I'm shaped like an orch, uh, ostrich. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like an ostrich. You know? That's an ostrich, an ostrich. That's in the orchestra. So like that's what happens. The hardest part. That's the part that goes. So when I'm losing weight, it always starts in my face. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then like it, it, is, it starts to go here. You are like a cute bird. Then is my leg. Yeah. Then it's like right here is where I have like to like a the hardest part. Rotisserie chicken. Yeah. These yes. are skinny legs. Yeah, it's the hardest part to but lose. But I think that's what happens, especially when you get older. Yeah. Like the fat loss sort of switches and it, it, he's right. It does stay in the center a lot I longer. have, so listen, hard. I- I want to go cool sculpting and see if that works. Let's just you say, go guys, yeah, when I get yeah. a flat tire, I got a spare, all right? I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Annie, I want, I well, here. Bang, 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 bang. Something <laughs> happened to me this morning. It feels like a bad radio show. Bam, 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 bam. And he said a joke. But how? Something happened to me this morning that I desperately need your advice on. Uh oh. Um, I got a phone call from a very sad nine month pregnant wife of a friend of mine. Uh oh. Basically saying, like, what is he up to? <gasps> you saw him this weekend. What was his behavior like? And I didn't, I, number one, I didn't know that she was nine months pregnant and about to pop. Is she fat? No. She, know, like, what do you mean you didn't know? You haven't talked well, to no, her Well, no, that's months? how little he, when I asked him, how's your wife? He was like, she's just a possessive bitch. Oh, got it. And I'm like. She's I, always trying to get me to like, Put a crib together yeah. and paint a wall blue. So he's a mo- so he's a monster. Yeah. Well, okay. I, okay here's just the thing. that story already lets me know. He was you my didn't friend, know. Annie. Okay. This is something you would have done because it's like we're very tied into our friendships that we made in high school. Yeah. He was a friend, a boy that I knew in high Not school. Sure. I to him and, from high school. And I had seen him. I have him. some questions before yeah. you finish this story. Never hooked up with him. Okay, that's the first question. Bro, he was. Did you give him sexual bro. full body hugs? Never <laughs> full sexual body hugs. <laughs> yeah. I don't so, care what you say. It was real sexual. <laughs> First uh, time she hugged me. <laughs> it was I'm like so one of those. It was you. one of those where I was like, "Ooh, this is too much." <laughs> no, they want that. It's projection. It's projection. I'm gonna leave it oh, at no, that. I, just, <laughs> ooh, I almost kicked her in the face. <laughs> not the face. <laughs> not the face. Please, the not tits, the face. Make the tits grow. <laughs> And okay, so, so you never, but did, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Was that by your choice or you both had, was it mutual or was he always trying to get with you and you were one of those like, oh, you're just my friend. Did he want you? I, when I was younger, I never perceived it like that. It was okay. always a bro right. sister thing. I was going through a lot and he was just a nice boy. Okay, got it. Okay, and so 20, like about a month ago, he was like, hey, I'm going to be in LA. Remember Danny? Danny used to be our old drug dealer. Well, just marijuana. But, in, and he's like, well, let's all get together. I haven't been down in LA, haven't seen you in 20 years. So I was like, yeah, sure. And on the night out on Saturday, I invited Gilbert, I invited Bobby. Neither of them wanted to fucking meet me there because I always like protection. I never want to see someone after 20 years. I don't know what they're about. Hello, so I need bitch. friends, right? I, by the way, you by weren't the in way, town. you were not in can town. I tell you oh, I was out of town. Right can I tell you something yeah. right now? If I hadn't seen you in 20 years, yeah. And I walked in and you looked like that. I didn't look like this. Though. I wore no, jeans and a t No, no, no. I'm just saying t-shirt. just the way you look in general. <laughs> but I'm just saying the way you look in general. I'm just yeah. saying he was probably blown away. Well, I was not dressed like a hot girl. I made sure to not dress like a hot girl because okay. I was alone and in downtown LA. So I'm like, I'm not going to play that game. Did but- you wear your bathing cap from the last episode? <laughs> <laughs> With my goggles? Bathing cap. I mean, wow. Can you even that imagine? Thumbnail. Just say Criminal. you don't want to fuck me. <laughs> Criminal. It's like, don't do all that. <laughs> Wait, does Gabby do the thumbnails? You bitch. She's sabotaging <laughs> yes. us. How good was that, though? I look like a straight up condom head. I, yeah, I was really proud of you. I was impressed. Thank you. It was beautiful. Well, that was my whole life. There's, I can't escape the fact that that's what swimmers look no, like. No, I got a, I have a bathing cap picture. <laughs> I got one online. A you can find cap? me. Swim cap, we yeah. Were swim, we were swim, swimmers. We, did, we had an Olympic episode. I was, Aren't I was you on happy? The swim team when I was uh, whatever age I was. I stopped because I didn't want to shave my body. We want you to actually. We would like you to join the swim team because that's a lot. It is what it is. But you could that, potentially I, take eight, eight seconds off your best time. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it was ridiculous. That's yeah. what they were saying to me. Yeah, you you you're a good swimmer, yeah. but you need to. I was like, nah, I don't love this that much. I love. I wanted to win so bad. I shaved my asshole. Like that's. I shaved every <laughs> single. I shaved my toe okay, hairs. Well, what everything. What was going on in your asshole? That it was, was that taking off time? Oh, that's at least three seconds off that's my best time. My. I don't know if you know. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's well that known. Visual. CBD isn't about what you feel, it's about what you don't feel. Stress, anxiety, pain. Feels is a premium CBD that will help to keep your head clear and feel your best. It's hassle-free, delivered directly to your door. CBD naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and big thing for us, sleeplessness. But seriously, I mean, I'm like, for real, this is for reals, feels, 
it, this is the CBD. There's a million CBDs out there, but I'm telling you, like, I need a little edge when I come to this podcast. Mm -hmm. If I take it before, it's not a good, I'm telling you, like, I, it's so relaxing. (laughs) There's no hangover or addiction. Place a few drops of feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding your right dose is important and everyone's dose is different. In fact, Feels offers a free CBD hotline that will help guide your personal experience so that you can find the perfect dose. The Feels customer service team is dedicated to making sure you get the best use of your CBD. Start feeling better with Feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash Tuesday and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash Tuesday to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash Tuesday. You guys, these big wireless providers, there's always a catch. You know. So when we first heard about Mint Mobile and how they offer premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month, we thought, what's the catch? But after speaking with them and using their service, It all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. By cutting out retail stores, there's no crazy overhead costs that get passed down to you in any form, no mystery fees. Instead, Mint just passes on sweet savings direct to you. I finally got to get off my dad's family plan. (laughs) (laughs) For people looking for extra savings, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just Listen to this, 15 bucks a month. $15. Oh, Do you know how much I used to freaking pay on my, uh, just on my solo data plan alone? $148. Not anymore. Not worth it. All plants with Mint Mobile come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just $15 a month. That's just $15 a month, Yeah, what are you spending $15 on? Everything. It's like two coffees it's nothing to get your new wireless plan for just 15 dollars a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free go to mintmobile.com slash tuesday that's mintmobile.com slash tuesday cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash tuesday that, that was a visual right there okay so you walk into the restaurant we call it a tuft i like your ass tuft. hair don't Thank listen you. to him um so anyways <laughs> He's a sexist. <laughs> Here we go. Remember when I go, your arm hair is an- offensive. I'm anti. I go, I go, your arm hair is offensive because it is what it is. But your ass hair is disgusting. <laughs> yeah. A, no, the way she said it, it was disgusting. I think. Thank it's you. Beautiful. Don't don't take it's me braided. out of context. You know that should be the name of this fucking show. <laughs> out of context. Let's yeah, do it. Out of context. You guys, will you just fucking listen to my story? You're the one that went on a fucking tangent about your hairy ass. We always let you finish your stories on it's this podcast. Tuft of hair. <laughs> oh, you want to make it a tuft? Okay. Just for the imagery. Anyways, so I did go out. I hung out with this person and my ex-drug dealer for an hour of my life. Mm -hmm. And it was a good time. But who I saw was not the same person I knew 20 years ago. This person was looking to party and looking to fuck and looking to misbehave. And I... and. All I know was that he is married. He has a kid. And that tells I me asked also him. Also, he always wanted you. That's yeah, what that I'm sure me. he did. Okay, He's well, I'm glad I rolled up looking you. like a fucking dude is what yeah. I'm saying. Well, um, and so uh, when I saw his behavior, I asked him, I was like, wait, like, you know, what is it? Like, how's your wife? How's your family? And basically, I was like, oh, she's possessive. And I was like, no, she's not possessive. If she knew how you were behaving. Right like based on what I'm seeing, I was like, she's not possessive. She's correct. Yeah, she's her intuition is driving her fucking crazy. Well, I get a message this morning, a long essay, and it's his wife. She's nine months pregnant. And she basically oh. said, I saw the messages he was sending you on Facebook. He's like, she was like, you were super appropriate. And um, but I want to know, like, you know, he's like, I'm desperate. I've been with him for 15 years. Like, oh. I'm about to pop. Like something has changed in him in the last three months. And I didn't know what to say. So I said, hey, call me. I don't want to have to explain myself mm-hmm. on text. 
And I was like, I think that you should deny it to him. I didn't say anything. What are you talking about? That's where her (laughs) mind goes. See what I mean? And like so, a tricky bitch over here. No, I don't trick. I don't trick. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't. I, I felt so bad. She, she was crying, and I was like, "Look, like trust your intuition." I was like, "I haven't seen him in twenty years. I don't know what his baseline behavior was, but he's not the person I knew right. twenty years ago." And I was like, "You're nine months pregnant. If you're about to pop tomorrow, like he should have been with you." Right. Not to insert myself here, but like, homegirl, like trust yourself. Is basically what I told her. And now I feel guilty that I said that. No, oh, you have you, to, because she asked you, it's like, you have to tell the truth. It's like, I do, right? Yeah, of course. Well, it's not even just that. You, It's okay for you to feel empathy and put yourself in the situation. If you if you were in a similar situation, you're saying, I would feel that way too. And you're, you know what I mean? I, I, it's it's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's not your job to what are like you supposed control. To do? Yeah. It's not your job to control her, like having positive emotions. It's your job to answer her. Well, should I have answered at all? Or she just stayed out of it? Like, she I just, asked you though. She asked you. It's like I don't know. Yeah, and I was like, "Wait, I'm a girl's girl. Like, if I were in her shoes, I just put myself in her you, like, shoes. You like could have I'm ghosted, in. but it's yourself- like why? Yeah, now that would have made it. I think that I think that you would you would be sitting here going, you're, you're, it would have been a different question. You would have been asking us, should I have said something? That's what you would be doing right now if you didn't. So either yeah. way, you followed yeah. your instinct and you did what you needed to do. I think you got it. Someone, I'm. I just yeah. try to be honest. And it's like he's doing the thing. It's like. I do that too, where I'm like, I'm always like protecting someone's bad behavior. I'm like, why am I protecting him? Yes, and so that's what I thought in the past because you know I've always been friends with dudes. Yes, that's always happened. And it's like, with, yeah. wait a second, like, why am I being such a fucking pick me girl yeah. and like defending these dudes' bad behavior when? And I know they're my friends, right. but at the same time, it's like I had a <laughs> when I was in my most heightened, triggered, like, like accepting my trauma that had happened to me. I mean, I was fucking livid. It was like. I don't know, five years ago or something. I mean, I was just like, so I had just realized that everything that happened to me did not happen to everyone. Yeah. (laughs) And that like, it wasn't my fault. And I was just like, everyone, like just so upset. I went on a podcast and I said, I don't want dick pics. I was like, I do not like dick pics. And some guy sent me a dick pic right after that. I took a screenshot of it and I posted it onto his Facebook page (laughs) and he freaked out and started calling. I don't know how he had Kurt's number, but he had Kurt Metzger's number was on his podcast. Yeah. And so he freaked out. He's like, I'm a teacher. Like, she needs to take it down or whatever. I'm like, no, no, no. You sent the thing. Yeah. I said I don't want something. Like, the insult happened when you sent the thing. Yeah. Whatever happens after that is not my fucking problem. It's like my choice to do with that information what I want to do. Yeah. And I think what ultimately how I feel about this whole thing is exactly that. Where it's like, if you were to call me and say, hey, why the fuck would you even like open your mouth? I'm like, dude, like, I don't have, I, I, I'm just knowing you again. I just met you for an hour. I didn't know that you had a nine and a half month <laughs> yeah, fucking pregnant right. wife at home. Had I known that inf- piece of information, I wouldn't have gone out with I you have hung out with at all. all. Yeah. Like, why I'm, are you here? Yeah, like, why are you here getting like absolutely demolished and then showing me pics of like women you've hooked up with? I'm like, I, I wouldn't. And anyways, it was just really sad and well, like, ooh, well that that. So now it's like, did you tell her that part? No. Well, you just did. Well, she'll watch it. She'll watch it. <laughs> I basically said, like, I was like, he looks like a guy, like, spiraling in some way. <laughs> and I was like, that's that's really all, like, I can say. Like, that was my perception of everything. Well, um, probably, they're obviously going through something. Oh, I just felt, like, the heartache in her voice, and I just felt, like, really sick about it this morning. Yeah. Well, I met a guy once who was, like, at a wedding and he was trying to say he was in an open marriage. And I was oh, like, wedding, I was bro. like, not, I was like, not <laughs> having it anyway, you know? Yeah. But he was like, yeah, I'm in an open marriage. And I was like, does she know? Like, <laughs> I fucking hate that shit. Like, yeah, you're in an open marriage. But he had all these kids and stuff. And um, he was saying to me, like, he's like, yeah, we just don't have sex or whatever. And I was trying to be like, all right, I'll listen to this guy. I'll be like a woman that's not his wife. Yeah. And I'll, I'll hear him out. Not interested yeah. in fucking him at all. But um, he was like, He's like, yeah, and it's just like, we never have sex anymore. And I was like, oh, well, why don't you like try to like do stuff for her so she wants to fight? And he goes, no, it's I don't want to fuck her. And I was like, oh, fuck oh, you. God. I was like, oh, I'm so over this. I don't feel bad for you. And he's like, yeah, it's just after she had the kids. And I know that's like a real thing that happens to guys where, but fuck you. That's your problem. That's not the girl's problem. Oh my problem. God, that's exactly what the his wife said to me this morning. She's like, you know, I'm on my second kid. My body has changed. My oh. self-esteem is really low. She's Oof. like, I just want to know the truth. And I'm like, oh. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Is your response always, here comes a guy in whatever setting, mm-hmm. and he's clearly trying to get with you. You entertain this? Or is there ever anything in you just to be like, this is not going to happen? Yeah. But I'm saying, like, what, um, do you ever do that? Or if you don't, why not? Sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't, right? So sometimes it's like, it's... 
like it depends on what the situation is. Like if it's someone who is like I'm working with, you kind of have to like, there's a dance you have to do. I yeah. mean, it's like there's guys always are always doing some bullshit, but it's like I, you have, it's just like you just be gross. She's like, she's right. There's always a dance. And, and it's like, and I'm not going to fucking me too. I'm not going to be like, this guy is attracted to me or whatever. It's like, he's just like shooting a shot. I let people shoot their shot once. Same. If they do it again, I, I'm like, and I've already said no. That's like, that's a fucking That's violation. a problem. It's it, like, it, it, and he's thousand sense. percent correct. It's like, I'm not supposed to assume that he knows I have a boyfriend. He's shooting a shot, right? So in right. that moment, I'm polite and mm -hmm. I, I take on like whatever advances he's putting on because I don't, he doesn't know. But in that moment where he's like asking for my number and I'm just like, hey, like, no thanks. Like, you know, I'm not interested. I don't even say I have a boyfriend. I just say I'm not interested. Yeah. Only because it's like, I'm not saying no because I have a boyfriend. I'm right. saying no because it's no. Well, there's like back in the day, <laughs> you know I mean? used That's to That's a work. whole different thing yeah. because that makes him feel like if the boyfriend was out exactly. of the picture. Exactly, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And then sometimes it's like, sometimes you're like, maybe I do want to just give this guy the ego thing and it's like, sorry, I'm just like not available now or whatever, you know, just like let them feel fine and then they go off. Sometimes, yeah. And that's like, who knows? That's like from whatever my own bullshit is from yeah. with my dad and my brothers and guys I dated when I was a kid. Well, it's, it's, even in that moment, there, like when I was younger, I used to feel codependent where I'm like, I don't want anyone right. to walk away feeling bad. Yeah. But like, as mm. I've gotten a little bit like where I am now, I'm just like, I'm just too tired to take care of anyone's yeah. feelings anymore. And where, it's, it's better for them too, right? To yeah. know, like, to know the truth. I mean, you should know what your batting average is. You should and, know the truth about it. And well, that's what I'm saying. Surprisingly, I would always prefer, yeah. I prefer somebody just being like, no, thank you. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, cool. Boom. Done. Move well, on. you know what? A lot of guys actually take <laughs> yeah, it pretty yeah, well. Exactly. Like, huh? They take it pretty well. Oh, a lot of well, guys are like, okay, cool, That's thank what you. I'm trying to say. I think that like, I feel like you're going to get the visceral response that you probably need anyway. Like, so I'm saying like, if you go, no, then, and if the guy's like, well, fuck you, then it's uh -huh. like, well, see, this is why I'm saying no. Yeah. I just go or like, a guy's going to be like, I had a guy, so I had a, okay. like a producer guy that knew on me, <laughs> this project I was working on and I would get like, I was going in like not every time, you yeah. know, like, so I wasn't like a regular writer on the show and he fucking leaned in for a kiss and I was so pissed. And I immediately like, I was like, no dude, so annoyed. It's just so annoying. It's like, yeah, you're yeah. in like, you are the one that hires me, like fuck you. And so I was so annoyed because, and I used to have so much fun with him. I used to like hang out with him all the time. And it was like, are you serious, dude? And then the minute I was single, he did that. And then I was like, all right, shoot your shot, whatever. Maybe you just like me. And then it wasn't maybe obviously liked you. Yeah, yeah, I know it's not always like, but it's just the fucking so annoying. It's like, can we do it when the fucking show's over? But um, and also, can we not do it? I didn't want to do it anyway. But so I was like, like no. And then I left. And then I texted him. I was like, so when am I coming in the room again? Like immediately. Like I'm not like forfeiting my fucking job. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. I'm just like, hey, yeah. remember we work together, and I'm coming yeah. In. The other end of that though is there are moments that Annie and I talk about where it's like. It's very clear someone's coming on to you and you say no. But when I have a girl's night out, the rules change a little bit and the rules change on the dance floor. So I always tell Bobby this, I call it my, it's called HF, which is <laughs> heavy flirting, but I take no numbers, awesome. I take no names. I don't even look at their fucking faces. Thought that made a whole form. I, <laughs> I thought it was heavy flow. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh my God, she's bleeding on them? That's great. And so let's say for instance, I'm dancing. There's someone behind me and I'm just dancing. I will I will grind up on whatever dick there is behind me, not even turn around to look at their face. The song is over. I walk straight forward. There's no exchange of words. There's no exchange of anything. It's just having a good time with just your Just going out on the how town many guys and leaving right now, a, How many leaving guys right a, now watching this are like hoping they see her at a at a dance club. Or like, now. I'd love to get I those even... Kalila blue balls. Yeah, she's like, there's Kalila. <laughs> <laughs> they got sweatpants on with no underwear. <laughs> Imagine, I'm imagining her doing it, but it's square dance. <laughs> like, I don't think you have to touch their dicks in square dance, Kalila. Or, or it's a wedding thing. Glad to the left. <laughs> and glad to the right. <laughs> it's a fucking... Um, Cha -cha, electric, real fat. <laughs> the electric slide. But Bobby is so not threatened um, by anything at all like even when i said i was like sweetie please come with me to see an old friend of mine he's like please 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 don't make me go please don't make me go <laughs> and i was like what if like he's into me he's like i don't give a shit please don't make me go yeah, why, so yeah i totally get that energy i don't want to go see you some guy from high school who just get so sad yeah it's like why you don't want to see that the life leave the eyes of a man when you yeah. show up with a guy <laughs> 
You know what it is, though? You know what we need to work on? Because I'm actually getting a lot. Like, these questions you're asking are interesting because I think I've done so much work on myself just in the past, like, few years that I would have a completely different situation. Well, you know what I want to say about what you were saying earlier is, and I, what I appreciate about you in this moment is, is uh, especially because what you, this is layered. It's nuanced. Because, like, it's you having a good time with a guy you work with. There is some chemistry because you're having yeah. a good time, all right? So is there a possibility, like, and it's like what you're talking about is, hey, let's be professional. So, yeah, we're having this thing. Let's be professional. So maybe, like, outside of work, if you want to take a shot, cool. If I And if I want to say at that point, hey, listen, I really enjoy working with you, but I don't want to, I'm not romantic with you like that. It, it, is there, and then it's like on the other person to be like, all right, you know what? Yeah, I'm into if you I like that, but I think we have work a good from work. Him, like if he stopped bringing me in, that's a fuck. That's a fuck. Exactly. That's a me too. Yeah. That's what I'm but saying. But the thing also is it's like, okay, so Louis and his apology said this, and I thought this was actually so good. In his apology, he said, when I was asking these girls what I thought I was doing was asking these girls a question, but what I realized now is I was presenting them with a predicament. And that's something that I was like, oh, that kind of like felt like rung true, where I was mm -hmm. like, in these working environments, when you are kind of afraid yeah. of that, and it's like, it is a comedy room, so it's like, and we, you're right, we do have chemistry, but I'm like, dude, I'm fucking crushing in this room right now, like, do not ruin this thing because you want to get your dick wet. It's like, it's not like he was on one knee proposing to me. It's like he was trying to fuck me at a party. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, like, but I had to, and my ex-boyfriend helped me with this um, because I used to get so offended when, when guys hit on me, I went, I thought it meant they didn't think I was funny, right? Mm. Like I thought it was like, you know, all of these, like the bullshit guys tell you when you're coming up and you're doing well and they're like, it's just cause you're a girl. And I'm like, I'm fucking funnier than you, dude. Like, I'm sorry, I was funnier than these fucking guys. But then it gets in your head eventually and you go, wait, am I only getting things cause everyone's trying to fuck me, you know? And then, so I had this thing in my head where I felt like when guys hit on me, it meant they didn't think I was funny or respect me. Oh. And what I realized is that's not, I mean, that's just like from my own past shit with- I get it. Molested. Um, <laughs> but it's like, what I, what he taught me was he's like, no, they could be, they're probably just more attracted to you because they think you're funny. So Egg. it's not like, Some so there them. is a way exactly. to make it, there is a way to be like, oh, I'm going to take the compliment of this and just like tell them the truth and not worry about their feelings, mm -hmm. but just like tell them the truth rather than trying to like maneuver around it. But it's. See, I feel like it should be dealt with. I mean, I feel like people should have more open communication about this. I think instead of like denying, like I never was a, like w when I was younger, I'd be the kind of person I'd be like, I'd be like that guy. Pretending like I'm your friend. Mm -hmm. And then a year later, I'm like, I love you. I've always loved you. <laughs> so and, I, and it's so yeah. fucking annoying. Right? I know yeah. how annoying that is, yeah. right? So later, when I got later, when I was like, had more confidence in myself, I would be like, nah, 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 nah. I'm not trying to be your friend. Right. Yeah. We, we, listen, I don't let people dictate the terms of the relationship to me. Right. I don't get friend zoned because yeah. I'm like, nah. Yeah. I'm trying to get with you. You're getting way blacker. As no, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's a, I'm like, we are really, we're coming, we're getting I'm just really saying, it annoys me part. when I hear yeah. guys talk about like, she's got me in the friend zone. No, no. You staying yeah. in the friend zone. Yeah. It is totally okay to tell somebody no. Because mm -hmm. first of all, you know what it you is? You can't just be my friend. Mm -hmm. you, you know how, 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 what it means to build a friendship? You can't just tell me, oh, we're friends now. No, I don't know you like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so no, we're trying to, I'm trying to get with you. So yeah. you deal with that. Yeah. I, you have to put it, and then if you go, and then so, so if you say, well, let's, I don't want to do that, the other person has to have some maturity to be like, you know what? This chick's talented. I like how we work together. Mm -hmm. I like what she does. I'll just, I just have to deal with my attraction. But I don't say you deny it. Yeah. The dude's into you because you were great. Yeah. You know, you were funny and you were attractive and you guys had good chemistry. He just needs to learn how to deal with working with somebody you mm -hmm. feel that way about. It's just like, it does feel like such a, like a Be weird betrayal that when you're like not expecting it, it's the same as the friend thing. Like yeah. when it's like, so you've been friends with me this long or we've been working. Like, it's just like, that's what your intentions were. This yeah. whole time, it's like, oh, it's so annoying. No, However, but, I'm, but, I, but I'm saying uh, to, to, to go in on that right. before, I don't want to cut you off, but I just want to, because this is great. You can cut me off. Uh, no, no, no. It's just, <laughs> I do it. so it's just that. <laughs> Annie, we both know we're both carrying a credit balance month after month. Listen, I got uh, back pain carrying <laughs> uh, this debt around. All right. If you dread looking at your credit card statements like I do, you're not alone. That can feel 
absolutely crippling. In fact, we should do that as a segment. I would <laughs> love to read your credit card statements. You would go crazy. Mine would be a lot of crab legs. Upstart has been a godsend. Upstart can help you on your path to financial freedom. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment. Unlike other lenders, Upstart considers your income and current employment to find you a smarter rate for your loan. Oh, where was Upstart when I needed it 10 <laughs> years ago? With a five Where was it 10 days? Oh, wait, I have it. <laughs> <laughs> With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Tuesday. That's upstart.com slash Tuesday. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Tuesday. If you're anything like me, shopping for new clothes can be needlessly stressful. It's so, honestly, it's so annoying. I don't want to wait in lines. We, listen... If our pandemic told us anything, we don't have to go outside anymore, okay? We don't. Certainly not for clothes. I'm not waiting in line for clothes. So why not let Stitch Fix make it easy by doing the work for you and you can spend time doing the things you actually love instead? Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. It's a completely different and fun way to find clothes that you like. Hold on. It's a completely different and fun way to find clothes that you will love to wear. Every piece is chosen just for you. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your life. And it's the easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. And try on pieces at home before you buy. Keep what you love and return what you don't. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included. Because let's be real, if it's not, nothing's getting returned. <laughs> On top of that, my favorite part is there's no subscription required. You can try Stitch Fix just once or set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards pieces you keep, and there are no hidden fees ever. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash Tuesday, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash Tuesday for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. stitchfix.com slash Tuesday. It's like th that, that I don't think that should be the, what you think, but I understand why you think right. that way. And that's what I'm saying on the other side, guys, you know, deal with your feelings. So it's like, it's like, no, 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 that's not the reason. Cause it's like, I can understand I got, and if I'm in that situation, I'm just saying, well, damn, this is, this is like, why not? And my, my response to that is always just because you can, doesn't mean you should, mm -hmm. but don't ignore the fact that you want it. Mm -hmm. Right. Just deal with those feelings. That's you, the most important thing. That's I think, what I'm saying. Is to like not be threatened by your attraction towards other people. Because what happens is that people think they always have to act on their feelings. And sometimes, right. sometimes yes. you just got to feel it without opening your fucking mouth. Yeah. And I always yeah, tell yeah. Bobby this. Yeah. like, Or legs, ladies. Or legs. Mm -hmm. But it's like. That's the hard part. <laughs> it's like, do you do I believe that Bobby has only ever had feelings for me in the eight years I've been with him? Unlikely. Does he believe that I've only had like attraction for him? And of course not. But it's like, I'm not threatened by either end like, of I like that. how it was like, not likely. And then hers is, of course not. <laughs> uh, <I'm>, but. <laughs> <laughs> you see that distinction there? There's a <laughs> distinction. <laughs> but it's like, if I. If I'm just not threatened by it because I'm a fucking human being right. and it's always going to exist, I just don't act on it because right. I'm mature enough well, to know where that's. Yeah, yeah. I had like I've had guys that like before I was dating Todd, we were like so fucking flirty. Like it was like yeah. I'm like twirling my hair and spinning around them, <laughs> and now when I see them, it's like, hey, sir. <laughs> you know, like it's like I just won't like I just it's just that's not like what yeah. is in this world for me anymore. I remember, you guys I remember that show, uh, My So Called Life? Yeah. My so <laughs> my second so season you can still do it i know my so-called life is oh, literally the, a perfect show it was a perfect show but there was a scene uh, in the show where i want to start just like gunning myself 
<laughs> okay, remember the girl? So she has uh, her 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 pretty friend. Ryan. Um, she, wait, no, no, the, no, 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 the, the other good one. Girl. The good girl. Shara. She, well, I forgot Sharon, her name. I think. But so, so she had sex with her boyfriend, okay? Right. And the then, football player. The football, and then she said something that was so, it was so great because she was saying like, once you let a guy have sex with you, he then thinks that he can have it all the time. I was just talking about this with my hypnotist. You know what I mean? All <laughs> okay, this is weird. So, uh, and I, and this is what we're talking about right now. It's just a perspective you need to have. Just, you know, so it's like, for, like, cause that's a guy thing. It's like, hey, we, we fucked. Yeah. So now we fucking now. Well, I, used yeah. joke, I used to have a joke about when I was like, when I was uh, first doing comedy, I was like, you know, 20, I was like, I'm not ready. I'm 27. I'm not ready. Cause you do, it's almost like you, it's like, fuck, you just don't, once you fuck them, it's like, yeah, you have this like responsibility. Responsibility. You, you, when time. you're saying as a female perspective, you feel like, well, now yeah. I'm just not, I, and I, and I'm saying again, we really got to get to a point of communication where it's just like, just because I, I did this, but I don't want to do it again, or I don't want to do it all the time, or hey, just because I maybe I had a, a weak moment, moving forward, though, I would like it to be more romantic now, or whatever it is like that. I mean, that's just what happens. Can I raise my gun real quick? Go ahead. How much better would our show have been, that pilot, if we could have had real perspectives? I know, but the thing is, is like the guy that was making it, he just wasn't. Like it was like they they tried to like mash something together, and I knew the potential. I yeah. said like the potential could have been this like this would be a great fucking show. That's what I'm saying. This is a guys. If you want a show about two Uber drivers that are actually comedians <laughs> that are driving people to go meet up with their ex, what was it like? They were like we were like going to bring people back together. No, it was just about like I, I don't even at this point now it's so muddled in my head that I'm just like whatever what. But it was guys and girls, you know, you know, different perspectives yeah. dealing with like, and it just. It just didn't go the way we wanted it to go. <laughs> Clearly, you know, to hell it went. You know, but it was just, the, the potential was there. I mean, I thought we were we had good whatever Come. it was. Come. But that show, I'm just saying, like that's just. By the way, most romantic moment in TV history to me was when they're walking down the hallway and she, you know, he wasn't acknowledging that uh -huh. they were they together. Were dating, they were and dating, then, uh, and then. Uh, you know? Oh, and they hold hands. And, then, and she, and she has that look on her face. Room? When yeah. he did the lean, I'm telling you, do you know how many guys I wasn't attracted to got me sopping wet because they did the Jordan Catalano lean? It's like, this is what you have to do. You have to lean in. The, don't this is actually me too now. But if a girl is like against a wall and they the guy would lean in, he would just like he would take your personal space from you a little bit and then not say something hot, like just say something like do you like pickles or whatever? I mean, that actually sounds like a sexual thing, but like, you know, like, do you want a dad? sandwich? Like, it was just like, yes, the lean. Oh my God. Some girl, by the way, came to my show in Buffalo and her name is Jordan Catalano. Ha. Oh my God. And God, Jordan, I feel like I've missed out on an entire- You can still it's watch most, this. I'm gonna watch this is, it. Listen, there's every character in this show <sighs> Is somebody that you know? It never made it to the Philippines. How? What a oh man! This was such a great. Let's show. watch. What we'll a tragedy! Recap. You really should. You okay, really should. Esther's yeah. never seen any TV show except the Twilight Zone too. Right. So show and um, what? Oh, Esther we should not watch TV. I don't. Wait, know we should do a episode by episode recap. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's so. It's literally oh, my please dream. Please zoom me in for I, that because I love that show. <laughs> we should. Yes, we should because honestly, Eric, I love I, that show. I say this all the time. If I think my life would be completely different if there was a second season of that show. Oh. Wait, there was there only one? Yes, because yes. it was a nightmare. What happened? You look at you read it. Like, listen, you're gonna watch that show and you're gonna be like, I need to know what happens yes. to these people. <gasps> but why was there only one season? I read a book that was like the woman wrote a book. I read a book that was like supposed to be the second. Like, but there was like it was like a whole lot of things. It was contracts. It was like at that particular time too, shows needed to get like twenty, you know, twenty million views mm. to be like, you know, that show now would be the best show on TV you with know the that views was, that they got. I remember hearing too that it was actually targeted towards parents. It was supposed to be like more about like the parents. And like, how they deal, oh, it was so. Oh. Were you upset when the mom cut her hair? I was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was triggering because my mom yeah. went that route too. But it, it dealt with everything like marriage problems, uh, gay. Yes. Uh, guns in school. Guns in school. It dealt with like, um, <laughs> it dealt with so many different and issues. Just, and Insecurities. And, and Jared Leto be, as Jordan Unrequited Catalano, love. He was the fucking hottest pressure to have sex like he took her to a party I was like he he was so hot and it's like I think it also I'm not kidding I think I dated guys that like couldn't read because I was like it was another remember they they dealt with literacy oh yeah he, he, could, he, was he couldn't read and then I was like I need only idiots I would only date guys that were like the uh, stupidest it was just such a great show I gotta watch I love it. a good TV yeah. show that moves you thank I'm, I'm you sold. so much because I've never <laughs> felt more validated 
Because I'm getting to this like age in life when people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. On that note. You know what? You feel old. But just real quick. You know when you realize you're getting old? You know, sometimes you just things happen. Because I had this funny thing with Rachel. Like like we both felt really old. So I got this gift gift bag. And it, it it's actually a cooler and a bag. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like when you open it up, like you can keep Red Bulls and stuff. Yeah, like a Trader close. Joe's little right, 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 bag right. things. Yeah. So I, I said, oh, Rachel, here you can have this. So she took everything out of the bag and she's now using it as her purse. <laughs> and she put like a little thing of grapes in it. And she's telling me, she's like, oh my God, the grapes were still cold. And I was like, <laughs> You're so old now. Like you that's a old like if you were <laughs> if you were like 14 and your mom was like, "Look at my bag." You'd be like, "Mom, that's a cooler." And she was just like, "It just you just realize you the things you think are cool now." Yeah. Like if you think about like young people are going to oh. look at you like are you crazy? Like that's well, also it's like, oh my God, you're not even gonna believe how much sleep I got last night. Right, guys. right, right. This was incredible. I went to bed at 9 p.m. last night. Yeah. All the <laughs> things that uh all the things that we uh like as you get older, the things you think are like, holy, this is the stuff. That's when you feel like you're out. It's when you get out of touch. That's what being old is. It's just out of touch of what young people think is cool. Yeah. Or if you're like ice cream for breakfast and then you're like, that's not. If you have ice cream for breakfast now, you're like, there's something. And you start really talking about what it's going to do to you. Ooh, yeah. I'll be in the toilet I always bar. do a vibe check with Jules. I'm like, Jules, what am, how am I reading today? Yes. Old, young. Am I reading Gen X, Gen Z, millennial? <laughs> am I reading Gen X? Yeah, but with her, <laughs> you're you, you old. With um, her, you you actually yes because you come in. I you, have you, to be. You're like this, you know. I'm mo super mommy, momster. Um, it shocks her. me you're a when you mention that she has a mother. I always keep. I I don't know why in my head you're gonna like reveal to me at one point that, that you had her in high school. Kid. I mean, look, it could have happened. That would be something that would have been on my so-called life. Oh yes. <laughs> Why? There would have been a toilet really baby. Kid. There would have been a toilet baby. There would have been a toilet Rayanne baby. Rayanne would have had a toilet baby. Oh, Rayanne. Oh, my God. And Imagine Rayanne Jules was an alcoholic. Is my toilet baby. You know what? Baby. You're the Rayanne in this. I'm Rayanne. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did she really have a toilet baby? No. No, but she would. Oh, yeah. okay. She that would have been bad, season She was two. the bad girl, bad influence. I think I think that's another reason I was a bad girl, too. I mean, these shows had a lot. I also really liked Like, watch Gia her around on... Bobby. She might. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never was that part. I never was that part. <laughs> I always, I never fought over dick. You can have the dick. I will say this about I wasn't Annie. Fighting over the dick it would be about she was, she wanting was, something that you can't have. I like, had a friend that she was doesn't read that way me. at all. When I first uh, met Annie, like her and I are very like we girl code is thick between yes. us. Oh, that's good. Yeah. No, like, I, I make sure people. I'm like I would never. And I am very and though I'm so attracted to Bobby, and I I just slide off the chair when I think about him. <laughs> I just, you know, our friendship is more important. Thank you so much, Ray. <laughs> what she basically just said is, thank God Bobby isn't hot at all. <laughs> no, I would never. I'm not. A, I really am good at. It's almost like when I were, I used to work at actually a restaurant you, called The Cowgirl and I used to have to dress like this. It, there was karaoke on Fridays or one of the days. So I was so good at like I can block music out. And I think it's the same. I like I can. Very, I'm not attracted to people. Well, who what are happened in to her? I, I will. I think we can all do that. Also, you. Some people can. It happened to you. You when you were young yeah. we, with Becky. Right. She she had a best friend who took one of her boyfriends when yes. she was really young. And so that shit mom. sticks with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just. It was so dirty. And you know what it was though? It was what you were saying. It was like what Rayanne was doing, where it's like a jealousy of yes. what someone else yes. has. Yes, yeah. it ain't about the it ain't exactly. nothing. It had nothing to do with the guy. Right. You, whether you're attracted or not, it's about like in our friendship, I have to be better than you. Right. Mm. You know, and that's what it that's a whole different vibe. Ooh. And she you know? was like, even if she wasn't better than her with school and stuff, she was like the sexual. Yes, one. yes, so yes, like, yes, yes, yes. I need to have this. You know. Oh what my mean? god, Eric, no, but I'm you know so what? Wait, why don't you guys this? start uh, my so-called life? I know. We just podcast. Do it. Right, just we just we should like it. You know what I mean? it. George, set it up. Done. Uh, George, let's do it. <laughs> you, we can all do it because I know exactly what you mean. Because I was thinking about like, because like the other day when I came here, she walks in with like lingerie on and a shawl. And very uh, matronly. It was very yeah. She it's she really ruined sad. it with a grandma from vibe. Ross. She had a cane. She you know, like, ah. but for me, my first thought is like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, I, I, it wasn't even a thought to me to be like, well, damn, you know. And I think that a lot of that has to do with like, I knew subconsciously that is part of like my relationship with Bobby and you know my own thing. And I was just like, so you can be like that. But can you also I, see where- We all can be like that. But can you also see where, when you said that she was giving sexual hugs, that maybe she wasn't giving sexual hugs? And no, maybe no, no. that was I can was promise you, you from the bottom of my- His face is so funny right now. From the can bottom of my on? uterus. <laughs> no, 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 no. She, you, you were a different person back then. No, 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 
fucking hell. With all due respect, well, I like you very much as a Here person, and never in my life have I ever perceived it's you like or that. even wanted to, to give like you that. a sexual hug. I'm sorry if my D cup titties got in the way and made it sexual, but that's maybe why I took them out because maybe dudes like you were perceiving oh, it the wrong oh. way. Oh, it's me. Oh, it's my fault. Okay, so now I'm not. I can't be gaslit. Okay, you were almost gonna. <laughs> You know what I'm talking, George. <laughs> hey, it's time for a game, guys. We're gonna play mustache ride or nah. Okay, <laughs> mustache ride. Oh or yeah, nah. great segue. <laughs> Are we gonna ride this mustache or not? <laughs> is, is that what this is, George? Yeah, we have famous people with mustaches, uh, men mostly, and uh, in honor of the cowboy episode. <laughs> now I have. I hope that there's a woman in here just because you said that. In honor of the cowboy episode, so let's say, uh, would you ride their mustache, Annie? I mean, look, you could put a whole fucking dollop of shit in his mouth and I'd still write. I'm going to be so bad at this game because I don't, I'm not attracted to actors. Doesn't he look like Benicio Del Toro? He like does that? a little bit. That's her boy. That's my boy. Don't ever say Brad Pitt looks like a Benny. <laughs> Jillian Bell from Workaholics. Yeah. Loves that guy too. Benicio? Because yeah. he looks so grimy and yeah. just... he looks like he's a choker, honestly. Uh, I remember being on stage. Uh, I was in Canada and it was like a few years, a few years back. And like Brad Pitt used to be like the joke you would make about like if the the hottest guy around, you'd right. be like, oh, what are you, Brad Pitt? Yeah. Like Brad Pitt would be the joke. Yeah, it's a Shania song. You know, so I said yeah. to this girl in the crowd, like, oh, what are you like? Something about Brad Pitt. And she was like, Ew, isn't he like 40? And <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh fuck. I was thinking about that who's too. Who's the like, new hot guy now? Well, um, Noah Centineo, do you guys wanna what? know? Yeah, who's that? Noah Centineo's from um, All the Boys I've Loved Before. Have you seen that? No. With Laura Jean, come on guys. Let me see it. I know all the hot young boys up. because Jules keeps me up to date. Oh, well, I but that's that generation. Well, I that's what that, that is. Yeah, yeah, you know right, what's funny though? Right, I'll right. watch like I would, I don't Like she doesn't even find um what's his name? Um from Drive. That guy? No. Yes, I swear to God, that's that's him. No, no, no. A couple other ones, but she doesn't even find you know Ryan Gosling was art. Like Ryan Gosling, that's they, yeah, she, Ryan Gosling. They, but even he's now old. He's old, yeah. yeah he's old now. Shit! <laughs> that, that's the one I was gonna give you, Eric. That's Ryan what I'm Gosling. saying. Gonna, that's what I'm saying. If Ryan Gosling's old now too, like who? Like well, that's you know when you're. Funny? It's when you're out of touch. That's what makes you old. Mm -hmm. I feel out of touch. I don't know who the hot guys are now. I was watching. <laughs> I was watching like these Disney movies with my nieces, and uh, you know, like the Disney Channel movies. Um, and they have the Descendants, which is all like the 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 children of the heroes and villains of mm -hmm. Disney movies. And I'm like, oh, this like Captain Hook kid's fucking hot as shit. I'm like, I, is, am I allowed to be saying this? Fucking with like a nine year old. I'm like, oh my god. And I looked him up, and he was 25. And I was like, oh my god, he's young. And then I realized my boyfriend's 27. <laughs> you live in the he dream, man. He was 25, Annie. and he looked like. But they, they, but they do that. They do that, right? They should do that. And I realize why they do it now. Well, well they don't want aunties. Uh, they don't want aunties confused about their feelings. Yes. Oh my god, it's Eric Griffin. <laughs> it's Bobby. <laughs> If we had a baby, this is Cheech our baby. Marine. Bobby mustache and I's baby. Ride or not. Yeah, Cheech Marine all day, all night. Yes, let me ride that mustache. But does he, that just looks right on him. Mm -hmm. It didn't look right on Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt was like obviously playing a role. This is like who I know, I know, that's person. what I'm saying. This is yeah. like his, yeah, yeah, okay. He would feel, we would all feel like our dad when our dad shaved his mustache, you know? Did you ever have that where you're like, who are you? I know. But doesn't he still look amazingly young and the mustache doesn't age him like it does? Wow, oh, Cheech yes. was hot. He doesn't look like a papa in this. Yeah. But also, Cheech is at that sort of, um, that vagina level too. I think he's a short guy, so you wouldn't have to do much wow. to ride that. I didn't mustache. realize how hot he was. But um, nope. Um, yeah, it's not a chance. For me. It's too. Th nope. It looks like my mustache, like legit. Yeah. And, it, and when the eyebrows are bigger than the mustache, nope. Although I do like cantin floss. Do you know what those are? That mm -hmm. style. What's that? It's with the. It's kind right, of thinner. I, just <laughs> thought, uh, I forgot our. our was, oh, was, was he Tatum. ever like the the you know? The guy. He was never my guy. That's what you I'm know saying. what? I mean, honestly, I do. I do like the idea of. You know what was fun watching him, at, knowing that he married Jenna Dewin, and then watching Step Up afterwards, That's and then it was like a. It was like a documentary and watching them bang for the first time. That was pretty. By nice. the yeah. way, dancers. Have banging? you guys seen Sex Life on Netflix? I haven't I yet. It. Is it good? But I hear all about it. So much fucking on that show, but. Just quick behind the scenes, uh -huh. she actually left her real husband and kids <gasps> for that act. I will be watching it. They I actually, will be watching. They actually it got alone? together in real life. 
So that Ooh. so when you watch the show, you're gonna be like, well, I get it. What they're doing it anyway. So hot. Uh, Very yeah. brangy. So this is her husband on the right on the show, okay? Yeah. And then he's a great guy, he's good looking, they got a kid, and you know, and then this is her ex boyfriend who's the bad boy who she can't stop shake. fucking. Yeah. She, she can't shake what what yeah. it was. Mm -hmm. And anyways. In I'm, real life, they're banging? And in real life, they got together. Oh, Ooh. shit. And well, he left watching. his chick? I don't know. I don't know. But what they're doing on this show yeah. is like. Uh, now, when you and your girl watch the show, or do you fuck? We didn't watch. We can't watch shows together because she doesn't have any patience. Well, she'll be on episode four, and I'm yeah, still on episode there two. Are, and then we have like a big fight. Yeah. So we just we have our own lives. If there is any like romance ahead. stuff that I watch or any shows that I watch from romance movies, I never, I can never watch it with anyone, even my, Bobby, not with my sister. Because you get like embarrassed. No, because it's like I want to feel it for myself. And myself I know only. exactly what you're yeah. saying. I don't. It's like, and I, then I don't want the guilt of feeling yeah. like should I be thinking about you? Whatever. It's like, yeah. can I just have? I it's love, a fantasy. Yes. Well, you don't yeah. want your girl looking at you like. Well, why are you liking like, this? Yeah. And then yeah. I have to watch it a certain well, way. Well, my no matter what I'm by the way, no matter what I'm watching, like you're watching my so-called life. Well, I was just gonna say I had to watch it alone. I couldn't watch it with my parents. Because you pick who you want to be in this. But scene. I was yeah. like, I was like, I was watching like this, like, oh my god. I was like riding my heel, not knowing what I was doing. Uh, can you watch you guys have to watch this show and it's an Irish show. It's called um Normal People. And I I watched it twice through. It came out right during the beginning of the pandemic. And oh I Cannot imagine watching that and enjoying it with Bobby. It is so emotional and so <laughs> romantic and so sexual that I'm like, there's just no way. He would have took me out of it. Yeah, sometimes you want to cry. Yeah, and I cried so much during the yeah, show. Sometimes yeah. you want to cry. Sometimes you want to fantasize. Sometimes you want to just, and you just want to have that moment to yourself. Well, how about and that's why even when you're in a movie theater, it's dark and you're just sitting like this. I'm not sitting like this. Like if we were in a yeah. movie, I'm not going mm -hmm. like, hey, well, you know, the movie's over here. And you just want to be like this. You don't want a judgment. The only time it's fun to watch anything with judgment. anyone is um, with scary things. I, you know, I was thinking about this too. I was thinking, I've been trying to do a joke about this. I've not made it funny yet, but I do you think like the fear of death is actually just FOMO? Like, are people actually, are you afraid of like the feeling of death or are you afraid of just missing out on things? Be because I think my FOMO mm -hmm. is so strong that I fucking will eat any fucking thing you put in front of me. That is a good point because I am so deathly afraid of heights. But when I went canyoneering and I had to jump like 20, 30 feet, oh, shit. I did it because I, of that same FOMO, where my FOMO is so strong, is stronger than any imminent danger I feel like and fear of heights that I have altogether. I don't understand it, but I I know what you mean. Like, Cause I'm not afraid of the experience of dying cause that feels to me like eating a bug too, where I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I wanna know what that feels like. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I'm not afraid of the actual act of it. It's well, and, so unless, you know, but there, that's because you're thinking of it maybe in a, you know, such a fun way or nice way, but it's like, do you wanna be eaten by a shark? But I think do you want to be, do, do, do you want, do you want to be like like slowly put into acid but feet first? Eric, you know? <laughs> I think because of all the hallucinogens I did, that I did, I think no matter how you die, I think it is it is a beautiful experience where you fizz out right. delight. That's how I feel. So like even if there's the pain there, and your body helps you fucking mm -hmm. deal with pain. Yes, your it body does. throws. It, in in fact, most of the time, like especially if it's like a slower death, like when you're in the hospital setting. Like my mom was a hospice nurse for a decade, so she saw people on their way out Oof. often. Um, your body protects you from that experience and it goes into a coma. Like the only time really that you're like aware is if you have trouble breathing, this and that, but eventually you will slip into a coma to prevent you from knowing that experience. I'm claustrophobic. So <laughs> I, anytime I watch a movie and it's like, people are like buried alive. Yeah. Oh, buried alive is the worst way to just die for me. Fucks with my head. But you know, okay, well, here's no, another it's the imminent. It's knowing it's it's like that, like it's, it's I, that feeling. I can't stand yeah. it. The same. Like I, when I think about like visiting what if I was Egypt, into it? I was like, I'm actually into that. <laughs> when I think about like visiting Egypt, I'm like, oh, I would never know like what the pyramids would feel like on the inside because I wouldn't dare take. I tell myself like I, I'm so claustrophobic, I would never do that. But then I was just in Hawaii recently and. Knowing how claustrophobic I am, there are these tunnels, like you dive down 30 feet and then you go through these rock tunnels underneath where if you look up, you're just in this tight little cave and you have to swim, 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 swim. And eventually it's, you know, you yeah. swim your way back out, right? But you're completely in case. My FOMO was so fucking bad yeah. that my heart was fucking jumping out of my chest, but I had to do yeah, it. Yeah, you don't want to miss out on that experience or whatever. And there's always something like, I think you learned this with comedy too. It's like, 
the worst thing that happens, you can always get a joke out of it. Like there's always like a silver lining Unless you're to a bad thing. Not alive which, to, which say is, it, to tell it. Which is why I find myself only able to uh, really connect with, or not that I only can connect with, I prefer to connect with a comedian or, or, or people directly around mm -hmm. comedians because there is something that is, there's like this understanding you know, no matter what the situation is, it's not that we're trying to make light of things. Right. It's just it's about it's about an analyzing of the situation to find yes. all the different things about it uh, to appreciate. And that the most important thing is laughter. It's not about offend not offending each yeah, other. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. the like our agreement is that our top um, priority priority is laughter. Yes. It's like joking, saying the funniest thing. So it's like. Even to take it even deeper, not even just laughter as so much as like understanding. Mm -hmm. That laughter is us acknowledging that we feel the same way yep. about this. Uh -huh. Or I, or I'm saying to you, I know where you're coming from, and yeah. I, I do that by going like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's so scary. You know what I mean? But that's really, <laughs> but that's what, <laughs> but that's what, we're, <laughs> but that's what we're doing. I think right, that when yeah. we're like, because I always tell people, it's like you know, you know, when you're to get people to laugh is a response that they get from. It's a visceral response to any emotion. Yeah. Whether you're sad, angry, you could be angry at somebody and you laugh. Right. You could be, you know, you're upset or you're crying at a funeral. You you could laugh. I mean, anywhere. It's because that is that base emotion, a base response. And I think we're all about that. And it's and it it's sets off endorphins. It's yes. happiness. So it's like, you know what it shows us? That no matter fucking what, you can always, like I, nothing look, is I, too dark. Annie, yeah, I got to say that there isn't a hotter sheriff in town. Thank you. Oh, you a sheriff? Well, oh, I'm I didn't a, see, you know what? A bounty hunter I, and a sheriff. I just saw that. Uh, I'm Sheriff <laughs> Muffin Top. The guns didn't make sense before that? No. I'm Sheriff Muffin Top, the, the bounty hunter. <laughs> I thought wait, she could have been a train robber or like a, like you know she's all in black so you know back in the day it the, was the bad guy the bad was the bad, bad guy. guy so thank you guys so much for yet another episode thank you Eric Griffin do you have anything you want to plug actually I'm going to be at the Brea Improv one night on the 19th so check oh that and out. I'm going to be at the Trembler uh, Brewing Company but it's sold out so you can cut that part out ooh <laughs> don't don't that that's great Annie is a seller outer these days that's I'm good. a seller good outer come to my shows guys before they sell out that's and great. even if it doesn't sell out it's very fun we have such a good time <laughs> we'll oh. see you guys next week thank you I so know. much Eric. Wow.